previous class, uh, we started looking into um, the existence of um, solution for uh, ordinary differential equation. So, this is uh, this is the chapter where we basically uh, talk about um, uh, the local existence and its um, uh, continuation, uh, the continuation of the solution and then finally, the global existence. So, before we do that, um, we will talk about um, uh, several classical theorems that are actually uh, uh, important from the existence of solution point of view. So, let me just uh, um, state the very uh, basic theorem uh, which is um, called as a Peano's theorem for the existence of uh, local solution. That means, it, it tells you at least one solution is there uh, under what condition, right. So, um, the first theorem for today's class will be uh, Peano's theorem. Piano's um, existence theorem and uh, the statement goes like this. So, uh, let omega be an open subset of Rn then subset of Rn and uh, f mapping from i cross omega to uh, rn be a continuous function. Be a continuous function that is it continuous function. Um, then the uh, ordinary differential equation ODE dx dt or x dash equals to f of t comma x has at least one solution, right. Has at least one solution. Um, here you can also impose uh, x at t0 equals to x0. Um, so, has at least one solution, uh, not solutions, has at least one solution, one solution in the neighborhood of the point x uh, t 0 x 0 right. Uh, so, in the neighborhood of the point um, x t 0 x 0 or simply since we are talking about uh, initial condition we can just mention x 0 right neighborhood of the point x 0. So, this is the very classical theorem uh, for the existence of solution um, of a uh, first order ordinary differential equation. So, basically uh, it requires that subset. Uh, so, here subset subset um, of Rn. So, here one requires only um, the continuity of the right hand side. If the right hand side is continuous, then at least we can say that there is one solution, right. It does not talk about the uniqueness of the solution. It uh, the, this theorem particularly only tells us that the solution is there, right. And this is what happened uh, in uh, previous class example when we wrote down uh, this example dx dt equals to f of t comma x where um, of course, we had uh, x at 0 equals to 0 where um, f of t comma x was given by square root of x when x is greater equal to 0 and equal to 0 when uh, um, x is less than or equal to 0 and uh, and uh, 
equals to 0 when x is greater, greater than 0, right. So, in this case of course, the function is continuous at the point uh, x equals to uh, 0 and uh, of course, it is continuous uh, uh, function on the, the this f of tx. And uh, if you look at um, then basically here um, our first solution was x1 as 0 because 0 satisfies this uh, equation and then another solution was uh, square root uh, basically x2 t as uh, t square. So, then you will have uh, left hand side as 2 t and on the right hand side also we have 2 uh, square root of t square. So, basically uh, 2 t. So, that also um, satisfies the given ordinary differential equation. So, having the continuous right hand side at least tells us that there is a solution may be unique may not be unique that depends right. So, this uniqueness part plays a very important role. So far you have to pay attention that we are talking about existence of solution. So, we are not talking about global existence that means the solution exists on the entire real line. We are saying the solution exist locally ok. Then the solution is uh, may, may or may not be unique right. So, the several question comes whether the solution exists or not locally then um, whether the solution is unique or not and uh, if the solution exists then whether we can extend it globally or not. So, these factors uh, we have to consider when we talk about these uh, the, the this um, first order uh, ordinary differential equation. So, at least one question is settled that if your right hand side is continuous then you can say that there exists a solution all right and this is one such example. Let us go to the next theorem which actually guarantees that uh, if you have uh, some special property associated with the right hand side then whether we can say that the solution is unique or not. So far, we are only interested in the local existence, right. Global existence we will talk after a few results. So, if I go to the next uh, result. So, the next result um, is uh, something of this type. Um, so, um, theorem or property. Um, so, the next theorem in this regard is called Gronwald's theorem, Gronwald's inequality, Gronwald's inequality. We require Gronwald's inequality in order to prove uh, the theorem that we are actually aiming at. So, Gronwald's inequality has uh, the statement of this type. So, it basically there are several forms of Gronwald's inequality. I will state uh, two forms here and um, just just so you know it has uh, the something called differential form and then there is an integral form right so here we are going to cite uh, at least uh, two versions of it but there are other versions of gronwald's inequality as well because it has something to do with first order od so it's better to uh, know this result proof can be found in uh, any one of those textbooks and reference books that i have mentioned it's a very classical theorem very old one and uh, the proof is also very straightforward so i uh, advise uh, or suggest you if you um, are interested to learn the proof of this theorem you can consult any one of those books um, this uh, coddington book is very classical so there you'll find the proof of these um, uh, theorems that i'm stating here so the uh, first versions of gronwald inequality is of this type if uh, let's say first criteria uh, gt b um, not b uh, is is a continuous function right is a continuous function on uh, t0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to t1 that means on some interval t0 to t1 g is a continuous function and a second criteria is gt satisfies the inequality inequality 0 less than or equal to g t less than or equal to k plus l times integral from t 0 to t g s uh, d s where t 0 uh, t 0 less than t less than or equal to t 1 then 
uh, 0 less than or equal to g t less than or equal to k times e to the power l t minus t 0 for t 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to t 1. So, here k and l they are both constants and uh, um, our uh, uh, function g t is a non negative function right. So, if g t be a non negative function and satisfies this inequality then uh, basically your g t will be less than or equal to k times l uh, k times e to the power l uh, times t minus t 0. So, this is a very classical version um, of the uh, Gronwald's inequality right. Now, then there is a uh, second versions of, uh, version of it as well. Um, if you want to prove uh, Grunewald's inequality, it is uh, very straightforward. I will just give you a few lines of the proof. Um, so, let us say that V t is equals to integral from T 0 to T uh, G s d s right. So, then uh, from we can call this as equation number star, this one as equation number double star just for the reference purpose. From star, what do we have? Then from star, uh, we get, we get uh, dv dt is uh, less than or equal to k times uh, L into vt. Right. If I take the, if I take uh, differentiation on both sides, so basically it will uh, reduce to, uh, uh, it will reduce to this um, dv dt and on the right hand side uh, will have differentiation under the integral sign. So, you basically apply that uh, Leibniz rule of differentiation and this will yield uh, k plus L into v t and v at t 0 is equals to 0 because then your upper limit and lower limit both becomes uh, t 0. So, the value of v at t 0 will be 0. So, then uh, hence uh, we get d d t of uh, e to the power minus of L uh, t minus t 0 into uh, v t uh, into v t. Uh, into v t is less than or equal to uh, k times e to the power minus of L t minus t 0 right. Okay. So, then um, we will have uh, uh, we can write d d t of v to the power minus of l t minus t 0 into v t less or equal to k times e to the power minus of l t minus t 0. And this will imply that e to the power minus of l t minus t 0 times v t is less than or equal to k by l uh, 1 minus e to the power minus of l t minus t 0 bracket close right. And uh, therefore, uh, let us go to the next page. So, therefore, um, thus in turn, what do we have? In turn, this implies that, this implies that uh, L into um, V t is less than or equal to k times e to the power minus uh, e to the power. Uh, so, we are multiplying by minus uh, plus. So, it will become e to the power plus L t minus t 0 uh, minus of 1 right. And uh, therefore, this implies uh, g t. So, from here we can write uh, g t g t equals to uh, uh, this basically v t equals to integral from t 0 to t uh, g s d s. So, we will have v t uh, uh, you can divide it by L. So, this will become L v t. So, we have g t is less uh, this will become v t less or equal to k by L uh, e to the power L t minus t 0 minus 1. So, therefore, g t will be less than or equal to capital K e to the uh, capital K uh, plus 
capital K uh, plus uh, L times V T right and uh, this is nothing but uh, K times e to the power uh, L times T minus T 0 right. So, our G T of course, it is uh, get rho equal to 0. So, you can write 0 less than or equal to G T is less than or equal to K times e to the power L T minus T 0. So, this is uh, the Gronwald's inequality uh, this that we were aiming to prove and uh, if you look at some. So, basically we have done some simple uh, calculation related to this inequality and we were able to prove that our G T is bounded between uh, 0 and k e to the power l t minus t 0 right. Now, uh, let us look at uh, the second form of uh, Gronwald's inequality which is what we are going to use. So, all right. So, the second form of Gronwald's inequality you can also call it as theorem. Uh, so, let x t satisfies uh, satisfy satisfy for all uh, satisfy for t greater or equal to t 0 the linear and scalar initial value problem IVP initial value problem which is uh, x dot is equals to a t times x plus b t and uh, x at t 0 is equals to x 0 this is equation 1 with uh, a t b t continuous functions continuous functions if y satisfies for t greater or equal to t 0 the inequality the inequalities y dot less than or equal to a t y plus b t comma y at t 0 is less than or equal to x 0 let us call it as equation number 2 then y t is less than or equal to x t for t get or equal to t 0 right. So, this is uh, how to say a second form of Gronwald's inequality which is what we are going to use when we prove this uh, next theorem which is related to the existence of um, local solution, but uniquely right. So, let us state that result. It is also called as uh, picard lindelof theorem. So, I am going to and uh, we will skip the proof of this uh, this theorem ok. Now, um, another theorem, but this has something to do with local existence, local existence of solution. We can call it as uh, Picard's theorem, Picard's theorem ok. So, let us consider the initial value problem d x d t equals to f of t comma x and x at t 0 is equals to x 0. If f is Lipschitz continuous, Lipschitz continuous continuous that is f belongs to Lipschitz of i cross omega i is the interval for the time variable. Right? So, f belongs to Lipschitz of i cross omega uh, 
uh, then uh, containing the point f ellipse is continuous that is f belongs to ellipses of i cross omega for some domain for some domain i cross omega which of course contains the initial point it has to contain the initial point containing uh, t0 x0 right then then uh, the initial value problem then the IVP has at most one solution at most one solution right. So, this Lipschitz continuity is the property that guarantees that the given uh, ordinary differential equation has a unique solution right, but they are both for the local existence. Uh, as we saw in the previous class uh, some examples where the global existence is not possible, but local existence is possible. So, at least for the local existence if the solution if the right hand side that means uh, the function f uh, if it is uh, Lipschitz continuous then we can say that the solution is um, um, uniquely uh, the solution exists uniquely and uh, of course, it is a local solution right. Um, as far as the proof is concerned uh, for the proof uh, we take help of the uh, Gronwald's inequality. So, I will give a very short proof and uh, hopefully um, you will be able to follow. So, suppose x 1 and x 2. So, uh, if the function is Lipschitz continuous then it is continuous and then we will get the local solution. So, that actually comes from uh, Piano's theorem. What really matters is that when it is uh, Lipschitz continuous then whether it is unique or not right. So, we have to make sure that uh, if it is Lipschitz then the uniqueness follow at most one solution. If it is continuous then it has a solution. So, the first part can be taken care by Piano's theorem itself and uh, the proof of Piano's theorem is, uh, is simple, but it is lengthy. So, for that you can consult the textbook and here we start with the assumption that uh, the solution exists. Now, we want to prove whether it is unique or not. So, the uniqueness part comes like this. So, let x 1 and x 2 uh, be the solutions of the given initial value problem right. So, this is given then the difference that means when you subtract them then the difference y t is equals to x 1 t minus x 2 t x 2 t uh, satisfies satisfies y dot t y dot or y dash or you can also write dy dt up to you. So, this is uh, f uh, t comma x 1 minus f t comma x 2 and initially uh, since they are both starting from the point x equals to um, x at t 0 equals to x 0. So, this uh, x 1 at t 0 and x 2 at t 0 they are both x 0s and therefore, your y at t 0 will become 0 y at t 0 will become 0 because if you take x 1 0 and x 2 0 then basically you are starting from two different initial conditions. So, obviously, you will end up getting two different solutions, but if your initial conditions are same. So, then the solution has to be unique right. So, therefore, your y t 0 is 0. Um, now, we will multiply both sides by y t transpose. So, let us say this is our equation number 1 this is equation number 2. So, multiply both sides of y t of uh, 1 of uh, of uh, 1 of 1 by y t transpose right. So, then what will happen then our left hand side will become y t transpose times y dot t which is equals to 1 by 2 d d t of 
yt uh, transpose times yt which is basically uh, you can think of writing ddt of norm of yt whole square this is your rn norm right that is the uh, inner product norm so you can put rn that is not so complicated and uh, on the right hand side the right hand side then the left hand side here you can write then the left hand side left hand side of 1 the right hand side something will happen to right hand side as well the right hand side of 1 is uh, is mod of you can write y t transpose f of t my comma x 1 minus f of t comma x 2 mod which is less than or equal to norm of y t over r n of course and uh, this will be norm of f of t x 1 minus f of t x 2. We are just using some inequalities from uh, from not even real analysis I mean it is a basic uh, inequality that uh, we usually use. Um, so, this is also over R n, but it is given that f is Lipschitz continuous. So, if f is Lipschitz continuous, we can write it as uh, um, this as uh, y t norm of y t over R n hmm, norm of y t over R n times um, capital L. Uh, this will be norm of x 1 t minus x 2 t over R n right hmm. correct so basically what do we have we have uh, on the left hand side uh, we have uh, uh, zt uh, so basically we have uh, with l as the lipschitz constant for f combining these two so, y t uh, y t is um, x 1 t minus x 2 t and uh, L. So, basically you can write it as uh, L times uh, x 1 uh, t minus x 2 uh, t whole square right because y t is your difference. So, ultimately what do we get? We get d d t of norm of x 1 t minus x 2 t which is basically our y t. Uh, so, instead of writing it x 1 t or x 2 t we can write it uh, norm of y t whole square is less than or equal to 2 L times norm of y t whole square everything is over R n huh? and uh, y at t 0 is equals to 0. Now, if uh, we apply the Gronwald's inequality, then uh, from the uh, from the previous, uh, so from this type, um, so Gronwald's inequality from uh, the second versions of Gronwald's inequality. So basically, it will give us y at t is less than or equal to x t. So that means here, um, application of Gronwald's inequality, application of grown walls inequality will yield will yield um, y t is less than or equal to 0 right hey, sorry norm of y t uh, over r n is less than or equal to 0 but norm but norm is positive quantity right you are basically doing uh, y t transpose times y t so basically y 1 square y 2 square y 3 square addition of all of them so obviously squares are positive and you are adding or uh, squares if, if any one of them is 0 then the squares are basically your non negative quantity so when you are adding them it has to be a non negative quantity so you can write but norm of y t over r n 
is get row equal to 0. Therefore, therefore norm of yt must be 0. But norm is a positive quantity. So, if uh, yt norm of yt uh, is 0 that this implies that yt must be 0 and uh, therefore, we have x 1 t is equals to x 2 t and that proves that the solution exists uniquely. So, at least having the Lipschitz quantity uh, Lipschitz continuity uh, assures us that the local solution exists uniquely and uh, this is the essence of uh, Picard uh, Lindelof theorem that uh, guarantees the unique existence of the local solution. Right. And uh, then uh, local existence uh, we have talked talked about um, Right, in its interior has a unique solution on a certain interval i alpha. Okay, um, you can also put it uh, in an alternate form. The statement, uh, so the alternate uh, alternative form of this statement could be of this type. So let, uh, of course, this is local existence. I have to keep writing that it is local existence. So the initial value problem IVP, the initial value problem dx dt equals to f of t comma x and x at t 0 is equals to x 0 uh, x 0 uh, with f in Lipschitz i cross omega i cross omega for some domain i cross omega uh, containing containing t 0 x 0 in its interior in its interior has a unique solution has a unique solution on a certain interval i alpha which is t 0 minus alpha t 0 plus alpha alpha is positive right. So, that means around the when we are talking about the existence of solution for some t that means um, you go from t minus alpha to t plus alpha. So, there is a small neighborhood of the point t 0 around which um, this solution will exist uniquely. It may not be small, it, it could be any uh, sub interval basically. You know? So, it could be any sub interval around, um, around this point t 0 where the solution will exist uniquely. So, this is more of a, um, uh, a proper statement of the local existence of the solution for uh, first order ordinary differential equation. Um, Now, uh, we will uh, skip the proof. Uh, so, the, for the proof, I recommend all of you to look into uh, the Coddington book and uh, in Coddington book, there is a very nice proof uh, for this particular theorem. Um, I would advise to look into it because it is very um, uh, interesting and uh, you will get to see that uh, how this uh, Lipschitz continuity um, is being uh, implemented um, for, for the proof of this theorem. Right. So, I will uh, stop here uh, for today and uh, I will continue our discussion on uh, local existence, uh, global existence or the uh, and the continuation of the solution in our next class. So, thank you for your attention.